We're going to get this party started with the prosperity chant. I'd love for you to stand if you were willing and able. All right. And y'all are going to sing with these wonderful people. I'll lead you into it. Together we're, we shall start. Yes. Is it Karen Drucker tune? Oh, we don't have it up. It's coming up. I know. I can feel it. But you just need to repeat after me anyway. It's coming. what will bring me to my highest good. Here we go. What do I want? What do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? Sing that again. What do I want? What do I desire? What will bring me to my highest good? Prosperity. Prosperity. I claim it. I claim it. some sunshine on a cloudy day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and I want to welcome you all to Shining Mountains Center for Spiritual Living. And if you're new to Shining Mountains, please pick up a welcome pack on the back table. Here at Shining Mountains, we discover, explore, and, ex and celebrate the divinity within us. So please join me in saying our statement of purpose. Our community lovingly and joyfully inspires, supports, and empowers individuals to discover and express their divinity. Now prayer is one of the foundations of this community. And you know why we pray? Because we know it works. So if you have something on your heart and mind, we'll have a little prayer circle go right up here right after the service or if you'd rather there's a prayer box in the back and if you put your name and put your little prayer or whatever it is you want 
or you don't even have to put your name. We'll pray for you then. We have a Zoom meditation every Wednesday from 7.30 to 8, and there are cards on the back table. And Reverend Linda here, I call her Reverend Zoom. She leads the meditation. <laughs> Bill Kale will be back on tomorrow, May 20th, with his Tibetan singing bowls. And we have amazing healing experiences. So I would highly recommend if you haven't been, come. And if you have, come back. And we also have a potluck after this service. So please join us downstairs for food and fun. And now it's time to take a moment to make a new friend or say hello to an old one and greet your neighbor. to your place and join us in our first congregational song. Yes, our thoughts, our prayers, as you've never heard it before. We have a little doo-wop, 50s feel, think Greece. to our wonderful musicians for getting us warmed up this morning. And welcome, everybody, to Shining Mountains. My name is Andy, and I'm going to take us through the children's prayer today. 
So, if you guys would be willing and able to join me, it's time to bless all of those young people with an Among Us and also the young child within yourself. So please, we see you, who you really are, made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. Oh, and with that wonderful prayer on our lips as we bow our heads today, we know that there is one divine, beautiful spirit that's in the children, it's in all of us, and this spirit guides us each and every day. And so I give thanks today that the spirit within me is going to move us to realize our greatest good now that the spirit within us is going to open our hearts so that we can share our good with others. And the spirit today moves within us to bring us health and wholeness, bringing us happiness and peace, bringing us new friendships, old friendships, and all in between. And so as I speak this word today, I'm so grateful that the spirit moves within every person in this place, that the law of God is working for our greater good. And we can rest knowing that tomorrow God is already there. And so I give thanks. May this blessing carry out to those of us here and those of us far. And I thank God I let go and let God. And so it is. Amen. This song by Devotion, Robert Anderson wrote this. I met he and his wife, Lori Sanderson, at Unity Village, and they're just wonderful people. And this is a really fun perspective. Today at my school in world history, the teacher popped a quiz. He said, this is easy. Just name the seven wonders of the world for me. So this is what we wrote. The pyramids of Egypt, the Taj Mahal, Panama Canal, China's Great Wall, world famous landmarks, we counted them all. Yes, they got every vote. Well, then I noticed the shy girl who sits next to me hadn't turned in her list. It was easy to see. The teacher asked her what the trouble might be. And this is what she said. There's so many answers. I don't know what to say. Teacher said, maybe we can help find a way. Just read us your list. The girl hesitated, and this is what she read. To touch, to see, to taste, and to feel. To laugh, and to hear, to love. Seven wonders of the world Well, you could have heard a pin drop in that room Nobody spoke, nobody moved Till someone asked the girl to read it once more through And so she spoke again
hands to touch, to touch, to see, to see, to taste, to taste, and to feel, and to feel, to laugh, to laugh, and to hear, and to hear, to love, to love. Why we're here? Oh, these are such wonders, wonderful wonders, seven wonders of the world. Seven wonders. Wow, that was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's thank our musicians, Don and Stephen, and our music. And, and Rochelle for that beautiful music. And Don, you were singing along too, I heard you, that's wonderful. And Red Star and Richard, thank you. Aren't they wonderful? Yes, yes amen. <laughs> amen. Thinking about the seven wonders of the world that you just mentioned, I love that. Isn't that beautiful? Because you know what is so beautiful about it is each one of us, every one of us, all of us, carry those beautiful things inside of us. It's part of what we are. It's part of our makeup, our DNA. There's nothing that's good that isn't part of us. Beauty, generosity, kindness, that's all a part of our makeup. And then we as individuals, we as these human beings who've had this experience and that experience, been here and been there and accomplished this and, and lost that, we get to decide how we're going to express those seven wonders, that beauty of what we are. And we do it under the shelter of each other. I say thank you, God, for that. Thank you, God, that we get to do this, this human journey under the shelter of each other. And that means that when one of us is down, the rest of us are still there for them. And when we have something to share, there's a place to give. There's a, there's a place to give. There's an energy that is receptive to receiving as well as giving. When we do this in community, when we're in a part of the family, the tribe, the, the, the community, the village, whatever you want to call it, we're all part of that. Oh, my goodness. And so thank you so much, Andy. I wanted to bring that up, too, for blessing the children, thank you so much, because we really take it seriously that we are here to support, to love, to acknowledge, to listen to, to see the children of the world. Not just the children in our community, the children of the world. That's our business. That's our personal business, and that's our business as humanity, is to support each other, to be that place where God shows up in expression. Oh, my goodness, again, thank you, Steve and Rochelle and Don and Red Star and Richard, because when I'm lifted up by the music, I know that this is not only me that's getting this benefit. It's not just us. It's going out into the world because it's energy also. And we get to stand in that beauty that's between each note. So let's just center ourselves. Let's just anchor ourselves right here and right now. Let's anchor ourselves in the expression and experience of the divine. That which is. That which is indivisible. Ever-present. The omniscient the omnipotent, the omnipresent. For there is no place where God is not. So let us anchor ourselves in that truth. Where we are is the perfect place. And we are in holy ground. For that which created everything out of itself could create nothing less than the holy, the whole. 
and the perfect. So as we allow ourselves to anchor into that truth, the truth is God is one life out of which we came. God is, therefore, we are. You are the I am, the Godness in expression. So anchoring in that truth, calling it our truth, let us say, I am that I am. I am that I am. The child of God in its wholeness and perfection. And so it is. And so then we go forth into our day and we do our business. We do our business of singing and dancing and supporting the children and loving each other and loving ourselves and being that expression of God that we choose to be because we're conscious we must be conscious that we are the children of the living God. We must be conscious of that. We must be conscious that it isn't something that we're attaining to, that we're trying to reach, that we're trying to become. We are, and the, only, the way we can become more of that expression is to shed that which has been a barrier to our magnificence. That's what we do. We don't gain something. We shed that which we've carried, that which we might have believed in error. Yeah, and it was given to us as it, if it were a truth, an absolute truth. But we, as conscious beings that live and move and have our beingness in the one, choose to know our truth and choose to know our identity through that truth. We not only know who we are, we know whose we are. And we get to do it over and over and over again as we raise ourselves up into that Christ consciousness. And the Christ consciousness means that we have moved out of that impossible state, that living in that state of believing things are not possible because whatever reason we give ourselves into that field of infinite possibility. Yes, infinite possibility. Oh my goodness, I thought I was looking for a partner and I was so, so focused on looking for a partner. I'm looking here and I'm looking there and looking down the road. And what was it I wanted? I wanted to feel love. And I wanted to feel loved and I wanted to share love. And in the process of this looking for something outside of myself, I found it within. I found it within myself. So I saved a lot of people, a lot of heartache <laughs> by not putting it on them. <laughs> yeah. So what we have within that is beautiful and gracious and kind and loving and joyous and, and real, we can share. But if we're looking for it out there to bring in so that we can become, we're frustrating ourselves. We're just frustrating ourselves. Because even if we find what we think is the ideal, has anyone ever been in, looked for a job and found the job, the ideal job? And in not too long a time realized it might not be the end all to your dreams, your passion, your love, you know? Yeah, and sometimes that ideal job is the ideal job. But sometimes it's just good enough. But you know what this month is about? This month is about, and I love this, from good to great. From good to great. And I think I talked a couple of weeks ago about how we can fool ourselves sometimes by thinking good is good enough. It's good enough. I can settle for this. You see that little tweak in there? I can settle for this. It's okay. It's okay. What would be wrong with having great? It might be okay and good enough for the time being, but do we stop there? Must we stop there and live with that? No, we don't have to. And if we have, and if we do that, and if we have done it for a while, all we have to do is say, okay, 
new day right here, right now, is where I'm living. I'm living in the now. And now I'm at choice. And then what am I choosing in this moment? And so much of, so many of our moments and so much of our time is spent choosing what we've had and choosing how we've done it before and choosing what's habitual. Well, we don't even choose what's habitual. We just do it. Or choosing what we think we need to settle for. Well, it's a new day, folks. It's a new day. And it's a new us in this moment. You are brand new in this moment. You've never lived this moment before, so you can't be part of what was. You are new. You are new in the spirit. You are new in life right here, right now. You brought a lot of gifts with you. You brought a lot of, possibly a lot of baggage, old stuff. You know, that's how life is. But you're new in this moment, new in choice. And you can be new in consciousness as you give yourself permission for that newness. I think we're moving into this consciousness, a new consciousness that is above, a higher consciousness that is above that which is we've, we've um, seen as good and bad. That which our senses have has told us are right and wrong. I think we're new, moving into a new consciousness that is expanded. And the way that we can do this in a, um, to help ourselves is to be teachable. Does anyone here know everything they want to know about everything they know? Well, you might not admit it, but <laughs> I met. <laughs> no, I used to be one of those people. I didn't want to admit I didn't know things. I was an expert on this. I was an expert on that. And that was a defense I used. And I might have been teachable, but it was in a real secretive way. I might listen to what's going on, but it would be a real secretive way I had to learn to. Uh, I mean, I had to pick up more information. But as I got, as I realized how, how um, this separated me from people, because I was afraid too. You know, when you think you know everything, you don't want people to know you don't know everything. So you have this, you have this facade you have to cover up, right? I mean, that you have to present, so you have to cover up stuff. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this stuff. But I'm talking about because I'm feeling those things that held me back at one point, thinking I needed to know. And why do we think we need to know everything? Because we think we'll be, people will think less of us if we don't, right? We have these screwed up ideas sometimes about how, the perception people have for, of us and what we should be presenting as. That's done in this moment. If you want it to be done, it's done, it's finished, it's complete in this moment. Who's more important? in your mind than you. You and your connection to the Christ consciousness, what is higher than that? And any time that we're moving in, a, in the... Um, moving in the category that the world puts in front of us, we're moving to the rhythm of the world and what we think we're supposed to be doing, we are not into our Christ consciousness. We might come in and out of it, but we're not into it and moving from it. We're responding. We're responding and reacting to something that isn't our highest truth. And that's what we want to discover. Our brain, we as human beings are always searching we are searching for a higher expression, a higher truth, a higher experience, a greater experience, whatever it is we're looking for. We're, we are searching. And when we aren't searching, we've settled for, oh, it's good enough. We want to really know ourselves. You know that, that uh, biblical scripture that says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free, but make you free into what? What are we going to be free into when we know who we are and what we are? We're going to be free to live the will of God. What is the will of God? Oh, that you should be... No. 
the will of God is joyousness, peace, love, well-beingness. It's the goodness of life, I believe. That's the will of God. It's not a specific go down this road, be an accountant. I told you before you were supposed to be an accountant. And you didn't listen. Now you'll be punished. I'm a Gemini. There's two of us up here. The will of God for us, that freedom is to be our magnificent selves. It's so that we don't have to... to, to struggle and and strive for our goodness so that we'll be open to receiving and do that which is ours to do to experience our goodness there's a difference there's a difference in thinking that we have to strive for it and work really hard for it. yes work hard if that's what makes you feel really good but don't work hard because you think you're earning Work hard because you know you're the heir to the kingdom. You know that. And you're just doing your own business on how you're going to express it. Whether it's however you do it, whether it's service out there, whether it's, it's within your family and your community, however you, whether you go worldwide, such as our beloved Andy is doing. However you choose to do it, do it from the joy that you are heir to the kingdom. That you are the child of the living God, supported, loved, supplied, and known. Known as its beloved. Always known as its beloved. Sometimes we've been told things that weren't true. And then we've embraced them. And then we've carried them forward. Did you know, my sister-in-law said... 31 years ago, and I'm still mad about it. (laughs) Dear God in heaven, why would we waste our energy? Why would we waste, why would we even bring that up within our body so that our body's experiencing that kind of energy? Because it's habitual, that's why. You know, and we hold on to things so that we can be cranky and so that we don't have to interact or do anything to improve that relationship in our minds, with our hearts. We don't have to go down to her house on 7th Avenue. No, but we have the opportunity to go to the house, to go to the mansion within and prepare a place at the table. Remember, there's only one table. There's only one table. Adam Grant said, rethinking starts with intellectual humility, knowing what we don't know. Now, the other night I was asking myself, what is it I don't know? And I believe me, I don't even know what I don't know. But sometimes I know what I don't know how to do. And that night, I was having a really hard time praying for someone, someone I cared deeply about. And I was having a really hard time, and I said, you know, I don't know how to do this, God. I don't know how to do this in a way that I believe. We have a five-step prayer here. It's called spiritual mind treatment, and we use it to not to get God in alignment, but to get ourselves in alignment, to get our thinking in alignment, to bring us back into the idea that there is one life, that life is God, that life is all life. And as heirs to the kingdom, we have, there is nothing being withheld from us. And so we can ask for, we can expect, we can experience good. But I could not get myself there that night. I know that. My head knows it. My heart couldn't get there. But here's what I knew. That that was okay too. That wasn't going to change anything. There's no God up here or God over there writing down, she missed the mark. (laughs) Don't have to listen to this request. Nothing like that. In my heart, I knew. 
I wasn't humiliated, but there was great humbleness in my heart. I don't know how to do this because my pain concerning that person's pain was too great for me to move out of it. You see, we'll all have times when we're challenged, but we need to be teachable or at least in, in, to be teachable. What does that mean? I was listening. I was listening. I was listening for God. I was listening for something, and that still small voice came through. Always, and it comes through for all of us. We just need to listen more, believing and trusting in it. It's not just a, um, when, it, when things are looking good, I'll listen, but when things are really tough, boy, I can't hear it. No, it's just the opposite. But we never want to shut down that still small voice. So rethinking with intellectual humility brings us to that place of expansion. Expansion. We don't have to sit in the, uh, the, the um, intellect and look for reason and look for um, explanations. We can allow the field to, to be open so that we receive more. We receive more. That we can expand our, our ideas, we can expand our beliefs, we can expand our, our perceptions and our expectations because we've allowed more space for that which we don't know, that which we haven't experienced, that which we don't even know we don't know yet, but we're willing to find out. We're willing to let it come into us. Oh, my prayer was, May I have the faith and the, the presence of Jesus the Christ as he prays thee, O oh Lord. As he knew that before he asked, it was answered. My prayer is for each one of us. that we will know that we are the preciousness of God. That we, to be, to, to be willing to be humble is a great strength, is a great strength provider for us. Because then we get to be part of that greater circle of humanity. We get to be, allow ourselves to learn, not just from the mistakes we've made, but to learn new things, to bring more good into our lives and into our consciousness. As we recognize that God is, is spirit within us, that Christ consciousness within us, that brings us into that field of infinite possibilities that we've never stepped out of as we recognize our preciousness. With clarity, let us accept it. Let us not only accept it, let us live from it. For just like the body needs to be fed, So does that which is within us that cries that I am the child of the living God it needs to be recognized. And the power in that truth is the power that we can live from. Dominion over our own lives as we make those decisions every single day. Today, this day, I will be the expression of God as delight. Today, I will be in awe of God with great, great expectations of good.
to live as its wholeness is to live in holiness. To recognize its givingness is to receive unlimited good. To know the peace within brings peace to our world. And allowing the breath, the breath of life that is moving into you, through you, and out of you, you know that this is the life of God. This is the breath of God in which we live and move and are that which we are. The breath of God, the breath of life, And from that, claim, claim the love that created you. Claim the love that you are and that you are here to share. Claim your beauty. Claim your wholeness. Claim the divine intelligence that is always there for you, through you, as you, with you. And claiming your oneness with the one. Claim your family. and your part in it with humility as love. And in harmony, in harmony with the peace and the joy and the givingness and the goodness and the wholeness and the abundance, the beauty For that is the nature of the divine and of our divine nature. We are that we are, the I am. And so it is. Amen. I also want to thank those who have joined us online. We so appreciate you being part of our online community. And we appreciate your support. And we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. And now, as our ushers come forward.